Hey everyone, it's Angus here. I've been asked by a couple of people now to see if I can show them how to use the new TradingView screener to find particular setups, um, you know, using different indicators. The one that I've chosen to do that, you know, I have been asked to, you know, put a video together for is to show the MACD crossover. Um, without going to too much detail, the MACD is probably one of the more popular indicators out there. Uh, it's great to show value. It's great to show momentum. It's great to show change of direction. Um, great to show oversold and undersold positions. And in the back testing that I've seen, I've, I've seen you know quite a lot of people who've um, you know back tested just about every indicator across a you know wide variety of parameters. And um, the MACD does typically seem to be the one that produces um, the most profitable and I guess most regularly profitable results. But you know you can look that up if you want to have a look. But you know here's a way of finding. Um, companies that have um, just started to cross over. So if you have a look down here, it's a little bit hard to see. But if you click on this little uh, maximize pane here, you can see if we zoom in. So see how the MACD, which is the faster moving line, has just crossed back above the um, uh, signal line. And so there's a you know good chance that there might be a reversal in uh, pattern for this particular stock. Uh, yesterday on the NASDAQ, or yesterday on the whole stock exchange, the market went down on uh, bad earnings news. Um, oh, sorry, bad job report. It was a bad jobs report. And so the market had a bit of a pullback, but you can see this stock in particular um, had a MACD crossover, and you can see that it started to have a little bit of a recovery here. And so it'll be quite interesting to watch this stock in future. You know, def definitely not a recommendation. I don't even know what they are. Um, but let's just have a quick look at this one. So... If I pull out a bit, you can see that it's been a long way further up. So um, it had sort of a fairly good base around here, and then it was up as high as $160. And so from where we are right now, so theoretically, there's, you know, roughly 80% 80, 80 to get back to that sort of a level. There's roughly maybe 45% to get back to, you know, a, a recent sort of a high. Um, and there's, you know, up to 300% to, you know, get back to, you know, one of its all-time highs. So, you know, it's got it's got a bit of potential. Um, the MACD is definitely not foolproof. Um, it can, you know, be prone to errors. So do your research, as we always say, definitely not trading advice. Um, have a look and see what you think yourself with you know whatever indicators you use. Uh, it was interesting that its last earnings it rocketed up and then pulled all the way back. The last earnings jumped up, pulled all the way back. The last earnings it went up fairly well there. Let's have a quick look here. You know earnings are sort of gradually ticking up on the quarterlies. Revenue on the quarterlies is going up all right. Um, you know net income. No, not, not terrific, but not going backwards. Um, and here they're going backwards. Oh, as far you know, the, the revenue is good. You'd have to work out why the net income is heading the way it is. Um, you can see the next earnings is in 60 days, so that gives you a little bit of time. Uh, firm holdings. Bit of news. Digital and mobile first commerce, three core elements, point of sale, payment solution for consumers, merchants, blah, 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 blah. So anyway, could be interesting to have a look at. Like it's gone up, it's had a pullback. Um, you can see it does get quite spiky around these earnings periods. Um, it's a fair way to wait for the next one. Up to you whether you think it's worth looking at further or not. But the point of this video is to really try and identify, um, you know, what other opportunities there might be out there where you might have this oversold type position that might be starting to recover. So as I said, definitely not a 100% um, certainty, but if you're trying to put the odds in your favour, you know, you can see it's starting to form a green histogram. The momentum is certainly coming out of the sell side. So anyway, as I said, we'll see. So what we do to find more of these, we go to uh, the TradingView screener. This is under products, under screeners, under stocks. We can do this for Forex and for, you know, anything else. All right, we're here. And it's not obvious what you do at this point to, um, you know, try and work out how to find those crossovers. 
So you could go through all of these and just see if there's a filter under these that you want to try and use. And in this case, I know that there isn't. And so what I'll do is I'm just going to go here and I'm just going to type in MACD. So as simple as that. And tick this one. And then I'm going to click on the drop down and see what is already here. So I want to see when the level is crossing up through the signal. And so let's select this one. And so that's when that fast moving MACD line is crossing over the uh, slower, you know, moving average type line. Right, so let's have a look at the charts. So I'll switch to our chart view and see if it's um, anything useful. Let's have a look at our candlesticks and let's have a look at the one year just to see what's happening there. And so you can see here's all the stocks where they're saying that um, the MACD has crossed back up above the signal line. So there might be a change of direction, there might be a change of momentum. So if we have a look through some of these, what I'd like to try and do is find ones that you know, have had a bit of a pullback um, and then might be heading back up. So it's just, you know, easy way to flick through these. You might say, well, geez, this one might have been oversold, but, you know, it's had such a long downtrend that, you know, it might not be not, not be the best to pick. And as I said last night, um, the market did uh, have a bit of a, a dip. Um, what I'll do is I'm going to hold down my control key and click on Sony just to open it up into a new window up here, which I sincerely hope that this video thing is recording. Um, I'm going to go to see on super charts. Close that window. Don't need him anymore. I'm going to make it one year just to make sure I can see the bigger picture. And say, so, wow, you can see, you know, last time it was all the way down here at rally. It did rally a bit. What I try and do is like, I think each stock has its own rhythm. And so what I try and do is say, well, you know, last time it was down here, it moved up 8%. Um, so if it's down here, you know, is it likely to move back up? It's past its earnings period here. It's a long way down here. No idea if this is, you know, good or bad. All I'm trying to do is get things that are, you know, slightly more in my favor if I'm looking for these, you know, overbought, oversold type positions where there's been a bit of a momentum change. So again, here, you can see it crossed over, you know, very, very deep. Um, what was the rally there? So if we said the crossover was somewhere around here, and say, you know, 36%, 65% to back up to that high. So who knows? But if I was taking a guess, I'd say um, for Sony, maybe the momentum's changed a bit. Um, you know, you can wait a little bit further for more confirmation. Um, but it's, uh, it's, you know, it's not, not, you know, it's not uninteresting at that point. See, there's a bit of a support resistance area through here. So you might want to wait for it to tick up a little bit. But if I have a look, say here, from here, just to this level here, like, you know, going back up to there, maybe there's 10% in and over the next couple of weeks, if it does rally and go back up. Let's have a very quick look at its financials. So that's positive, ticking up. Mm, you know, so they've had a had a better quarter. They were trending downwards, um, heading back up this quarter. Let's have a look at annual. And you can see the, you know, little net, net income is showing you a bit better net income. Uh, annually, pretty flat, pretty flat. You know, not, not, not particularly exciting. Technicals are suggesting it's a sell, so you could keep a line this and see if it changes more to a buy with this change in direction. Um, analysts are saying it might be a buy, so you know, this is the sort of very quick, you know, look that I can do at some of these stocks just to, you know, see if it might be something I want to trade. But let's go back to find stocks in your portfolio. And what I want to do is I might want to further, you know, analyze this and break it down a bit bit more so I can look at loading, see on super charts. So just another another new tab. Uh, shrink this one back again. And so you can see this one's pretty flat. You know, it doesn't look like there's you know much happening through here. You know, that doesn't excite me. So I really want to try and find these ones where there's an opportunity where it's, you know, below this um, neutral line and you know sold off so let me get rid of that let me get rid of this let me get rid of this just to clean up my page so back onto here and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say I've got my MACD there and I can't really fiddle with that anymore if I go down to custom you know there's nothing really here that I can add to 
And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go add. I'm going to add another MACD in. And what I want to do this time is I'm going to say, show me where the, the level is below the zero line. So level zero and below. So this will now show me the ones, hopefully, where it's at a, at a better value area. So let's have a look at this Nestle one. Let's have a look at Adobe. So just opening up a new tabs. This Pfizer one here, that looks like it's well and truly oversold. Um, well, whether it's oversold or whether it's just gone back to fair value or not, but you know, it's certainly beaten up. The Sony was what we were looking at before. I like the idea that it might spike back up to that $100 type mark. Who knows if it will, who knows if it won't. These ones here, you know, look really thin as far as, you know, volume being traded. So I could add a volume filter to, you know, filter out those. Uh, Hershey Company, so they were doing really well at one stage. So let's have a look at them. So there's nothing, nothing much. I mean, you know, there's heaps of stocks, but, you know, whether there's something that's great or not, who knows. But what I might try and do is I'm going to say, Show me the stocks that went up in the last day. Remember, this is the last day. Show me the ones that ran 5% and above. And so the reason why I'm looking at that is maybe there's news or something that came out. So this affirms. So let's have a look at that. That looks sort of all over the place. But I like that this did have good momentum up. It's pulled back. Maybe it's going to go back up. And again, the market yesterday was down quite a bit. It's all pretty messy through here. I don't really like the look at these. So what I'm going to do is say, show me stocks where over the last one year, they're at least 20% and above. So they've had good upward momentum um, and they've come back. Again, some of these are pretty junky, so these 0.04. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, show me ones where the price is you know, $10 and above. And so that's interesting. So I'm only down to this one stock here. So between that $10 and $100 range. So let's get rid of that. And let's go custom. And let's say $10 to, let's make it really big. So $10 to $10,000 to see what comes back. Nothing comes back. So for this one, I've really filtered it out. And it's probably because um, the performance is so high. So um, if I got rid of this one here and went reset... I'll bring more back in. And so you can just see by filtering and changing things, um, I think what's happened is with this particular one here, because I had it below the zero line and because they've gone up 5%, that would have taken most of them back up above that zero line. So let's have a look at this one here, Cura Oncology. See if there's any. These are all quite strong. I'm looking for those ones that have gone up and had a pullback. So let's change that to, say, custom. Let's make it, say, 2%, which is a bit more conservative. Let's see if I get any more back to look at. Uh, nothing there that particularly excites me. Something happened with this one and this one. So now I've got quite a few open. Let's see how much time I have remaining. I've got quite a few more minutes. Right, so Nestle, change it to super charts, close that window, one year. So you can see, you know, they've been much higher in the past. It's had earnings. They didn't like it. It went the wrong way. So it was quite a big drop on that earnings report. Don't know. Doesn't doesn't wow me. But if I looked at from where it is now to perhaps back up to here somewhere, you know, it might be might be a short term play in it, but. Um, it's too volatile through here. I don't know if it's something I'd want to invest in long term. Let's see on super charts. I've seen a few AI tools that tip Adobe um, to do quite well over the next period of time. You can see down here, you know, long way, you know, let's call it oversold. You know, the thing to do would be to plug in an RSI, which is probably a more commonly used 
indicator for oversold and um, overbought conditions. So you can see it's sort of right down here, but it's still dipping down. So um, we're pretty close to earnings. It'll be fascinating to see what happens at earnings. Earnings here it dipped. Earnings here it dipped. So I'd want to wait until after earnings to see what this one did. Pfizer. So again, you know, long, long way down from, you know, where it used to be. Just a gradual fall from grace. And it doesn't, it doesn't often go below where it is today. $27 for Pfizer. Interesting. Don't know. Long long term downtrend. You know, if it hit that mark there, you'd you know, if it hit that, you know, anything that twenty five dollar mark, it seems to recover quite well from. Uh, let's have a look at my RSI. It, you know, it doesn't get much above that. You know, it doesn't have much momentum into it. So I'd probably, you know, probably leave it alone. But, you know, long way down. I don't know, do you think Pfizer's going to go much more below $27? What are their financials doing? You can see in the post market, you know, slightly up. Pretty flat. Not great. Analysts think it's a buy. They think the fair value is $31, which isn't. I don't know, what are we at? 27, so it's not great. 15% maybe. Nothing, nothing I'd be excited about, but not bad. Depends on your investing timeline too, you know, how long do you want to look at this stuff for and hold it? Let's hide this. Let's go one year. So you can see, you know, Hershey's a long way down. I must have traded it previously at some stage. Yeah, long way off its highs. What do the analysts think? So it's 194 at the moment. So again, not, not far off, you know, it's within 8% of where analysts think fair value lies. And it's been sort of stuck in this range here for a bit. You can always do things too, like if you see something like this and you think, you know, it's a little bit interesting, but, you know, not great. But, you know, geez, I love it if it, you know, started to recover and I got a piece of that. And you can always set alerts. You just simply go right click, um, you know, add alert on Hershey's. So if the price goes above, let's say, you know, $200, which is that psychological round number resistance area, you know, send me an email, send me an alert, play a message. And so then I can just go create. And so I can now forget about this stock and I'll just sit there until it reminds me that, you know, there's something better to look at. See on super charts, how much time have I got left? Oh, almost run out of time. So if you get to the stage where um, too few of your setups are there, um, you can always, you know, undo some of these and, you know, have a better look. The other thing that I'd probably add in is I'd probably add in volume you know, I'd like to see a, you know, volume over a certain amount over the last ninety days, just to you know get rid of some of these thin, more thinly traded stocks. Anyway, hope that was um, useful to those who wanted to you know try and find these setup type conditions, um, or keep an eye on this one and see where it goes. It's um, it's probably one of the better looking ones. And of course, every single day there'll be different stocks that you know meet that MACD setup and cross, and um, you just simply you know save the report and run it again and. 
see if there's anything you like. Thank you for listening.